you may not have realized this yet, but everything in a Christian's life is an object lesson. You're the object, and you're learning. <laughs> so it's an object lesson. And whether you object to it or not, you're going to learn one way or another. The funny thing about that is, <laughs> somehow I never learned. Okay, maybe I learned the hard way. And then my lessons that I learn are more valuable that way. And maybe that's applicable to you too. Maybe you learn the hard way. But one of the things I've learned is, first of all, to be straight up, you know, straightforward, honest, sincere, truthful. You know, we try to do that on video, especially when issues come up. And I recently had another issue come up. <laughs> and one of those issues was, I have a pet peeve. Really? You? Me? Peeved? Eh. You know, something that gets my goat. Bad. Bad. Okay, maybe not that goat, but, you know, slaughters my sheep. Jacob. <laughs> okay, just twist my whiskers. Now that I could do. But we all have those things that are like little buttons that we kind of like have that if they get pushed, sometimes you go, and you bark, and you bite, and you sniffle, and you snuffle, and you do all these kinds of things, you know, to exercise your freedom of speech, of course, but your also great inane ability to look like an idiot, and we all have that. You didn't know you were born with this capacity, but you have the capacity to look stupid anytime, anywhere, any place, and you can exercise it any way you want to. And as a matter of fact, most people do it all the time. They look pretty stupid with some of the things they do. Well, maybe not from your perspective, and maybe not from mine. After all, I'm pretty smart. But you know, from God's perspective, it looks pretty stupid. Well, I had one of those experiences where I look pretty stupid, and I even feel stupid about it. But there's a very, at one time, very popular site that's called the Bible Prophecy, Bible Prophecy Today, I think it used to be called, and then they changed it to Bible Prophecy Blog, and that's what it is today, is Bible Prophecy Blog. And I've been posting on the web for a long time, and I came across this Bible Prophecy Blog site that was a lot like the old chat rooms, if you're digitally inclined. If not, it's kind of like having texting before there was texting and before it was on cell phones. Some of us old techies were texting before the new youngies were doing it the way they're doing it today, which is like everywhere they go. At least we can find ours to the bedroom or wherever we had our office or our computer. And so we texted inside of chat rooms and we would just, you know, we'd fly back and forth. Matter of fact, it was faster than Twitter in a lot of ways. And you could carry on multiple conversations all at the same time, you know, with bunches of different people all going all at the same time, blasting away. And AOL used to have it, and you know, I'm going to date myself, Usenet, and all kinds of things used to have chat rooms. And Some of us old techies, we know how to do that. So when texting came along, we're like, really? You call that something? That ain't new. <laughs> okay. But, and we didn't have limited characters for texting either. We didn't have to use our thumbs. Matter of fact, we had keyboards. So we could really text faster. We're about 10 times faster than most people texting the way they do it nowadays. And we still had our own abbreviations also back then. But my point is, when I was back in those days on the web and doing yeah, kind of, I wasn't really in charge of a ministry. I was kind of like viewing ministry and participating in others' ministry. I hadn't really started my own yet. There was a guy that was just starting his site, and it was Bible Prophecy Blog, and he used to have comments, and he took them out eventually. Then he had, for a while, he had even the ability to post video comments, and that was the earliest, probably, first episode of ever God inspiring the direction that would eventually become Vidivo, the ministry that I have from the Lord that I share, you know, really his ministry with you about what he's doing through me in order to talk to you so that he can get out his word that he wants to speak to you, not because it's mine, but because it's his and he wants to get something out there that most people wouldn't even try to do because it's kind of like, hey, you talk about God, talking God, God talks, really? Where do you go for it? But the point is, <laughs> when God needed a donkey or a mule, he came to me and said, look, fool. <laughs> and I said, okay, I'll do it. And so 
somebody's got to be responsible. So in some ways, when we say my ministry, that's what we mean. I'm technically responsible. God's in charge. God gets the glory. I get the problems <laughs> and the discredit. So before there was video, I had recorded, and he asked me to, the, the guy that started, I can't even remember his name, but he started the site, and he, he wanted to have commentary so I was commenting, and I was you know, pretty biblically knowledgeable, so I'd comment, you know, and I kind of built a little following, I guess you'd say. You know, in those days, I guess it's a following. Likes, friends, whatever you want to call them in Facebook nowadays. Um, can't even think of what's called in Twitter, but followers? I guess followers. So, well, so they're tweeters, <laughs> early days. Pre-tweets. <laughs> they're pre-tweeters? Pre -pre -pre oh, well. But the point is, is that in those days, I was sharing and caring and getting really my feet wet on the groundwork of what would eventually become the ministry. And so posted a reply because he, he had just opened up this new feature he wanted to test out. And he was probably a, a uh, judging by his reactions, probably a uh, programmer. Programmers have a certain mindset. Believe me, I've dealt with a lot of programmers. I'm a network engineer, retired, more or less, you know. And that's a long story. Everything in my life is a long story and an object lesson. Oh boy, can I tell you? Whoa, we should talk. Hey, you and I, you want a cup of coffee? Hey, we'll do wine. Oh well. But with that, he wanted to test out his video recording responses capabilities. And this was early prior to somewhat before YouTube was big. Well, although YouTube's always been big, but not everybody knew about it. And so I went ahead and recorded one, you know, and, you know, it's kind of like, you know, it was cute, you know, it was kind of like, you know, I did it. You know, it's kind of revealed myself of who I am, you know, rather than the persona that we all put out there when we don't have Facebook accounts, you know, and everything's out there now. Back in those days, or the day, you didn't have to have your real profile. You know, you could have any profile, make up, and become any kind of avatar or person you wanted to be. And before the movie Avatar, there were avatars. <laughs> See how that all, you know, been around for a long time? That's what happens when you get old. You've seen it all, been there, done that. Okay, they're doing it again, just reinventing it in some other way. And everything goes round and round and round in circles. But recently, Bible Prophecy Block had gone in certain directions, and I had gone in other directions, you know, because they were very, he was very, or whoever was in charge, was very semi-anti, kind of like Calvary Chapels, and begrudgingly slowly kind of let you know it be known that he wasn't antagonistic because he had too many followers but that he wasn't posting anything from them on his website and he got bigger and bigger you know and for a while it was kind of like a competition because after a while I opened up a website and was blasting by him just because I was sharing everybody you know I cared you know and I'd share things that most people wouldn't share you know and tell them warning warning you know this is you know kind of like 50% good 90% good you know whatever but he had such a good, clean site. Then all of a sudden, one day, boom, popped up. Ads were there. There was advertising all over the page. There was advertising. I mean, it, it used to mess up my computer. And I was ticked off. You know, I decided, that he ain't no friend of mine, so I got rid of him. And then I'd gradually go back, you know, and the Lord was dealing with me and telling me, look, it's okay for them to have advertising. You know, you're just not one of those people that I'm letting you do that. He can have advertising, he needs it for his, and it was probably schooling or money or job or whatever maybe, but he was really getting gung-ho at the programmer on advertising. And so I used to treat it as a pet peeve. Every time, you know, I'd go on the web, I'd have to go look at it. You know how you get obsessed. You gotta go check it out. Look at what they're doing. By God, you're wrong. And then pretty soon you don't even know which way's up because you're too busy being upset about what's downset, you know, and what's right set, you know, about your upsitting and your downsitting. By the way, David wrote a song about that, and whether you know it or not, the downsitting and uprising was the right word to use, because if you use it in English, it's the right way for the King Jamin. But if you try to translate it into Hebrew, you might get the right idea, or maybe you'll get the wrong idea. It depends on which one of the translations you're going to use, and versions. Hmm. Downsitting, uprising, what's that mean? <laughs> An uprising is an uprising. You can figure that one out. Downsitting is being set down. And if you've ever had a child you had to sit down, you know what a downsitting is. So you got it. See how simple it is? The Bible's easy. Now, I happen to exercise a different kind of theology. I call it integral specificity, in which the word is the word is the word is the word. You know, if you don't know what that means, then you're going to have to come over and talk to me sometime about integral specificity. and um, Or IS for short. So, 
this guy got on my nerves, you know. I mean, it just didn't matter. And so spiritually, I had to repent, and I had to change, and I had to grow out of it, and I had to grow up and grow around and grow over and grow through. And so at different times when I was back involved with prophecy, at different times, you know, sharing and caring and doing stuff, you know, and, and web in the ministry, then, you know, it kind of like irked me in the back of my eh, eh, stiff neck. Eh, eh, you know, and I'd be going, eh, 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 you know, and it just irritated me. So I really hadn't gotten over it. And so gradually I had to go through this process of development until I finally got to where I was letting go and letting God do with him as God chose to. Well, I still cared about the guy, you know, and that's the biggest problem that I have with what I do in ministry. As much as people think I don't care, I do, you know, and it hurts my feelers, you know, like I tell my wife, you hurt my feelers. I don't like that. That hurt my feelings, you know. I've, I've worked on getting sensitive again, and now you went and stomped on them. You know, and it's kind of one of those things that you work at growing into the type of person God wants you to be, which is a sensitive heart. He wants to take away the stony heart and give you a heart of flesh so that you'll be tenderized, you know. And the best way to tenderize something? Pulverize it. <laughs> Stab it. Chop it up. Take a knife and... That'll tenderize it. <laughs> so you can get your heart one way or the other. <laughs> oh, boy. But for me, I had to learn to release Building Prophecy blog to its fulfillment of what it wanted to do. So just this last, oh, I don't know, about 60 days ago, I started watching it again, you know, and noticed that it was kind of like, you know, fading out. It was just doing some church things, you know, just churchish. And uh, that's good, you know, praise the Lord. I kind of went, yeah, but what a shame. They had such... A wide variety of blog material and you Bible material and scriptures and things on the side of the blog and then sometimes we post one or two articles if that that were really good you know and the rest was just kind of churchish you know you know what's like you know you can get a you know church magazine and see the same thing but my point being is that for the last 30 days they were silent disappeared I got worried the longest they'd been gone before was two weeks you know and this is like most of the prophecy sites that I'd seen around had pretty much shut down, except for some of the wacko ones. And they were pretty much backing off and not putting out much material. I guess they got burned out or burned up after the big Obama thing, you know, where they kept trying to make Obama the, the Antichrist. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jeez. And they kind of like blew that one out of proportion. Or that people were beginning to not follow all these wild ideas that people were throwing out there from the prophecy seminars and... and, and uh, conventions because they were looking them up on the Bible and going nah, I don't think so you know I get excited about what you're saying but yeah I don't think you're right on that you know and they're becoming wiser than stupid and so a lot of Bible pages have filtered down some of the old Bible scholars have died <laughs> imagine that and even David Wilkerson's passed away and he went on to be with the Lord but the point being is that this site had pretty much ended so I kind of went, well, you know, we should revive it. You know, So I prayed about it and didn't really get a firm answer one way or the other. Kind of got a strong feeling from God that I should do something. And I didn't know what for sure, so I went ahead and started it. You know, And so I started building this site you know, to restore the old by rebuilding the former places, the waste places, and making them into you know, what God wanted them to be. And so taking a page out of the scripture, I applied it to my living situations and circumstances, so I spent about 24 hours, last 24 hours, building this site that was really a pretty good site. Not bad. Didn't feel comfortable with it, one or two things about it, but you know, I liked it. You know, it, was like, it was called Biblical Prophecy Network Blog. I just added the biblical in front of Bible prophecy and put network in between blog and prophecy, so that way it wasn't completely like their site, but I put a disclaimer underneath it and said, hey, you know, this is in honor of them and wanted to build upon what they were doing. And I kind of I kind of knew that if I did this one thing, you know, that it was going to upset the apple cart. But I wanted to make sure that I was doing the right thing, so I kind of provoked in a way, you know, kind of like, you know, poke, poke the bear. I put on the site that I had just finished building and making, you know, really nice, you know, it's getting better and better each day. And I put one of Rick Warren's posts, which, you know, I can mention President Obama and most Christians go off the deep end and lose their cookies, you know, and forget that they're, you know, God can, God's still in control. You know, 
but most Christians lose it. Well, I mentioned Rick Warren because a lot of people lose their cookies. <laughs> There's another one to lose their cookies over. So I posted him. Sure enough, the same day, bam, the owner of Bible Prophecy Blog pops up you know, out of nowhere and posted something on his blog. So I knew the blog was no longer shut down. And I went, oh boy. So immediately I stopped what I was doing, went back into everything that I'd done on Facebook, everything I'd done with the blog, and changed it to Biblical Prophecy Network, which, you know, that's fine. And it's not like theirs. <laughs> you know, it's not like that. You know, some of the things are similar, but they've expanded because, you know, taking out Chuck Smith and all that stuff that they had done before, so avoiding Calvary Chapels like the plague, and, you know, even Missler, they were begrudgingly add once in a while. You know, because they were kind of like East Coast thingy, and I haven't figured that out yet, you know. But, anyways, my point is, is that I needed to let go of my own flesh and not be so worried about what they are doing, but what God is doing. And that's usually what happens when we get into our flesh. We forget what God is doing for what we're doing. We do something instead of working with God, we work alongside God. And sometimes that's not a good place to be. You see, Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. And if you're going to come alongside God, you're going to be not doing something, you're going to be employed in enjoying something, meaning that you're there in the presence of God, you don't do work. Think about that. So, I recognized quickly that this was wrong, but the sight was right. So I finally figured out what the Lord wanted me to do, and that's why this long story short about this video that we're recording for Bible Prophecy Blog, that's how we did it, you know, is that that's how it came about. It. Who knows, maybe the guy in charge of Bible Prophecy Blog, you know, will come out and, you know, open up communication or something, I don't know. But that's, you know, never was intentional to take away from his site because, you know, he's got his own little thing going. You know, it's his own little blog, you know, and it's got ads and gimmicks and, you know, limericks and, you know, selling junk. I mean, boy, do they sell junk. And the one thing that is so antipathous of me and that type of ministry is that I don't. You know, I don't sell anything. You want something, I'll buy it. You know, you want something, I'll give it to you. You know, if I got it, I'll give it to you, period. You know, you ask for it, I'll go get it. You know, I'll try to. And that's the type of ministry I've done from the beginning, you know, is that there's never been a charge. It's freely received, freely given. So I should have realized that the Lord did not want to put old wine into new wineskins lest they burst, but rather wanted the new structure to have the newness of what he's doing to expand beyond what the old kind of format was and style in the way that they were doing it with all the ads and gimmicks and stuff. And it was really hard to try to make the site because all the ads kept getting away. I kept trying to get rid of them and it kept, you know, it's hard to get rid of them. So, praise the Lord, I, I began to realize that even old men See any old men? Can learn new tricks. <laughs> and the old dog doesn't have to have a bone and we don't have to pick a bone you know in order to you know have something to argue about because the reality is when you are big enough and you let go you know like this tiny ministry that I am at one point in time I mean I remember the Lord I was just starting off in video and I was checking numbers because I said you know Lord I, I want to be like David you know I don't want to number the children of Israel and you know I know that they you know, kibitz, kibitzed their numbers a little bit when they didn't count the Levites, you know, and they didn't really have a complete accurate number, but, you know, they still were doing what you said, don't do it. Don't count the, the children of Israel, don't count the horses. Don't ask me what horses have to do with it. Oh, there's a message there somewhere, and I probably have heard it before. But, hey, God gave me, at the time, the ability to see one part of the ministry that I was doing, and it had hidden, it had hidden, it had over 500,000 hits that month. Let's see, 50,000 times 10. So yeah, it was it was way up there. Yeah, and uh, I was humbled. I never looked again. Okay, I looked a little bit, but I didn't look at that one. <laughs> I look at something else just to see if it's getting a little bit of activity. 
But I don't keep track of each page and, you know, how many people wear what and all that. Because I think that's wrong. You're not doing it. It helps sometimes to have some numbers to go by, but you don't want to keep track of numbers even though all pastors do in some ways. And they'll, they'll teach even if nobody's there, but believe me, every pastor has a little bit of kind of like inside, you know, you got to have a little bit of number, you know. Might be, it's nice to get paid you know, once in a while. I'm kidding, not me, I don't get paid. But you know, it was kind of interesting that the numbers were there and God had blessed it. So from that moment on, I said, okay, I don't care if we do it for one. And that's the gist of what this ministry is. That even if we do it just for the one, we do it in the name of the Son. And so it's never been that I wanted to have you know mega church or mega ministry, but I wanted the ministry to be full of the love of God and the love of Jesus so that people would see that with which they want to have more than what the ministries are doing about building ministries on top of what others' ministries are. And, you know, I personally try to include biblically as many ministries as I can that, you know, I can at least for the most part agree with, you know, and some ministries I really, I just can't go there, you know. Um, I try, you know, I pray, and God says no, and I go, okay, and I'm happy. <laughs> but with this ministry, the Biblical Prophecy Network will always be about, and we'll still have some questionable you know, sites that we have to include, you know, but will always be about the network of Biblical Prophecy. You know, those articles that may be right, the site may be wrong, but the article may be right, or there may be things in the article that are good for you to learn and to develop and to become a a person knowledgeable that what we're looking forward to isn't the Antichrist, the end of the world, Armageddon, you know, the rapture, but we're looking to Jesus. And that's the purpose of prophecy, is the revelation or the unveiling or the make aware with your eyes being wide open to see Jesus. Because if we could just see him as he is now, looking up into the heavens and see him seated at his right hand of the Father, our world would be different today. At least mine would. Oh, wait a minute, I have seen Okay, never mind. Well, anyways, your world will be different. <laughs> Don't quote me. Okay, quote me. But my point being is that there will always be those that want to hype you. There will always be those that want to hook you. There will always be those that want to tickle your ear. There will always be those that want to draw you in to listen to what I got to say in prophecy. And the fact is, any educated idiot can do prophecy because God can speak to a donkey and he can speak to you and me. And so, pardon me, we don't need another way of presenting the gospel. We don't need another way of presenting prophecy. We don't need some new book or some new idea about Psalm 83 or some other weird kind of message that people are creating nowadays in the latter days. What we need to do is to see Jesus in it because if you don't see Jesus in it, then don't be of it. That's the bottom line. If prophecy isn't leading you to an, an emotional, intense realization and tenderness towards Jesus himself, then you're missing the boat of what the Holy Spirit is doing and you're being led by the wrong spirit, so to speak. Because the spirit of Antichrist is out there. It's meant to distract you, to attract you, and to turn you away from the things of God in a way that would be incrementally turning you in subtle ways, like violence or... You know, getting into carnality or, or spirituality of a type that isn't biblical. And so, be aware of that. You know, that you are the object of a lesson being learned throughout eternity, that you're your own object lesson, as well as you are the lesson that God is using to objectify His grace and mercy to the entire world, so that the world may know that you are his disciples in that you have love for one another and why I share this was because I do love my brother you know that has the biblical prophet or has Bible prophecy blog well I love him he frustrates me you know and aggravates me at times you know because I just don't do money and I don't do you know like carnality you know I'm like hey you know go be carnal somewhere else you know I, that's flesh you know I don't have time for flesh I want to go do spiritual you know let's get together and all enjoy the fellowship of you know his suffering and <laughs> 
suffer together and die. No, but enjoy the fellowship of the joy of the Lord that God has given to us what little time is remaining, you know, that we can employ that fellowship one with another so that we can inspire others to do better than we do, even more so to the knowledge of Jesus Christ that they can know more about Him than we even know. And maybe they'll tell us about it too. So you see, it's never been about me. Nah. I wish it were, you know, because then I could, you know, kind of like duck out and head for the hills. But it is about Him. And so because it's about Him, He talks to me. And because He talks to me, then it seems to be about you. And so he talks to me and he talks to you and we talk to each other. And that's why it's not about you or me, but it's about him talking to us as we are learning to follow him day by day in a more intimate and personal way than we've ever known him before. And so with Biblical Prophecy Network, I got a lot of blogs. <laughs> that's what it will always be about the intimacy of Jesus and the realization of him in these latter days we live in. I hope you don't be deceived and I hope you don't get caught away or caught up in the things today that can mislead you or misdirect you but rather even as we all have you know provocable areas we would just let go and let God deal with those things and then we move on with what God has told us to do even as God has told my brother in Bible prophecy blog what he wants him to do and I pray that he continues to do it according to the grace and mercy that God has given him so that he and I could sit down in the kingdom, you know, and share a campfire, you know, and talk about how carnal I was in this life at times. So, God bless you. I pray that you'll enjoy Biblical Prophecy Network, and I pray that you'll employ the tools that are available at Bible Prophecy Blog, as well as the entire wealth of information that there is on the network, on the web, in your church, with your pastor, with your study group, and with all those informational systems that you use, whether iPad, you know, and all the different droids and everything else. Use them. Don't abuse them, but don't get confused for what they are. They're just tools to know Jesus, and that's the most important thing there is. Okay, I'm ready to